Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to take any logo and make it 3D in Apple Motion using a very basic photo editing software like Photoshop Elements and Apple Motion. So we're gonna be working with the Plum Productions logo today. This is my production company down here in South Florida. And as you can see, the logo has multiple colors in it and this square icon is a very like solid element. So what I'd like to do is kind of isolate those white circles and the light purple circles from the original total logo and make those really feel 3D. So there's a lot of like different elevations to this logo. So the first thing I had to do was prep the logo. Here we are in Photoshop Elements. You can see that I've just got my stacked logo here. And the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate it and turn off the original logo. And then I'm going to section out all of these white circles by just selecting the inverse of these circles and deleting them. And then I'm going to duplicate that original logo one more time. And this time I'm going to isolate the light purple circles. So as you can see, I have three separate layers here in Photoshop Elements. And now I'm just gonna save this as a Photoshop file. It's got a PSD extension. So that's the kind of pre-work you wanna do when working with a logo like this one where it's not just text or an outline, right? You have to do a little extra work when you've got a logo that has like many different colors and over a solid shape. So now what we can do is bring it into Apple Motion. So here we are in Apple Motion. I'm just gonna grab that PSD file. And let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drag it over my project pane and hover. And then I'm going to get this menu option here that says import merged layers or import all layers. I'm going to select all layers and look at what happened in its own group titled sectioned logo, which is how I saved this logo in Photoshop Elements. I've got all of my three layers here individually. So let me turn off these two. You can see I've got just the entire logo as it is. And then if I turn that off, I've got my isolated purple circles. And then if I turn that off, I've got my white circles. So we're gonna be treating all of these different elements of this logo separately. So let me turn back on all of those layers. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to drop in a color solid behind our logo so you can really see what we're doing. Let's head on over to library. I'm gonna hit generators, color solid, and I'm just gonna drag it in my project pane above my section logo to make sure it doesn't enter in that group. And then I'm gonna drag the section logo group above the color solid. So I've got everything in the order in which I want it. And that color solid is not part of this group. And I'm just gonna change this color to white. This way we can really see the work that we're doing when we start working on the depth and with our shadows. So now let's head up to the top center of the screen, hit add object and select camera. And we're gonna switch this project to 3D. And now we're gonna make all of these elements 3D by replicating them one at a time. I'm first gonna mute my two top layers so we can focus on this full logo here. And I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on that logo in my project pane. And now we're gonna head up to the top right of the screen and select this replicate button. And so you can see suddenly we have a whole bunch of versions of that logo, but it looks very messy. Let's fix that. We're gonna make sure we're selected on Replicator in the project pane. Let's head on over to the inspector and we wanna make sure we're on the Replicator tab. And we're gonna make some adjustments here. Let's look at this first line that says shape. We're gonna drop down and select line. The next thing we're going to do is look at the start point. The value of X is negative 100. I'm gonna change that to zero. And for the end point, I'm going to do the same. It's positive 100, we're gonna make it zero. And now let's skip down here to this line 3D. We're gonna check that. And now let's head back up to end point. I'm gonna hit this drop down, and we're gonna look at the Z value. I'm going to raise this Z value to 75. So if you're not clear on what the Z value is, think about like a very simple graph from high school, maybe geometry, I can't remember exactly what class we learned this in, but the X value would be the horizontal position. The Y value would be the position vertically within the frame. And the Z value is how close or far back it is from you. So we wanna manipulate the Z value and bring the logo like further front to the camera. So what you're gonna see here 
is you get kind of like a little bit of a blurring effect here, especially on the outer edges of the Plum Productions type. You see how not clean that looks? Let me show you how we're gonna clean that up. Let's draw attention to the project pane and we're going to find the muted version of our logo. You may have noticed when we replicated this logo, it created a duplicate of it here and then it muted the original. We're gonna select the muted version. I know it's muted because it's not checked. We're gonna head over to our inspector window. We're gonna hit properties and let's check this drop shadow box. And then if I hover my mouse over the drop shadow line, I do get this little show option. I'm gonna hit show. And you can see here that we've created some definition in these letters. As I play with the distance of the shadow, we can get more definition and those letters look more three-dimensional. I'm going to just play with the opacity and the blur. And now they really do look as though they have some depth. So now just to illustrate for you what depth we've created with this replicator, I'm gonna rotate it on the Y axis. First, I'm gonna turn off the color solid and select replicator. I'm gonna head over to properties. Let's drop down the rotation and let's spin it on the Y value. So you can see here that this logo is much more three dimensional. And if I spin it all the way around, you can see that I can see the individual layers of my replicator. Let me show you why. I'm gonna head up to replicator and on this line here, points, I only have five points. So what that means is that very clearly in my project, I can see one, two, three, four, five versions of this logo. We're gonna change that and fix that and make it look more solid, but I don't wanna do that yet. When you start adding a lot of points um, with a replicator in this way on a 3D project, it can really slow down your computer. So I don't like to do that part of it until the very end um, because I still have a lot of, I still have a lot of work to do, right? So I don't wanna slow myself down. So I'm gonna leave that for the time being, but know that we will fix that later. So let me spin this back around. And now let's focus on the other elements in our logo. So I'm gonna turn off this original logo and I'm gonna turn on these purple circles. So in my mind, what I'm envisioning is that the base of the logo is gonna be a certain depth, but these purple circles are gonna be a little bit deeper. They're gonna protrude more. And then the white circles are gonna protrude even further. So let's replicate this element as well. I'm gonna select it in my project pane head on up to replicate top right of the screen, head back over to the inspector, change rectangle to line, change the start point value to zero, change the end point X value to zero as well. Select the 3D option here, drop down our end point, and I'm going to change the Z value to 100. Now remember, we changed the Z value of our base to 75. I want these purple elements to come out even further. I'm gonna make them 100. And again, I'm going to select the original version of those circles, head over to properties and add a drop shadow. Let me turn on that color solid so we can see what we're doing with our drop shadow. I'm gonna push up the distance and maybe dial down the opacity. And now lastly, of course, we need to do the same thing with these white circles. Let me turn off the color solid so we can see them. And again, we're gonna replicate and make all the adjustments we need to like we've done for the previous two elements. Hey guys, while I'm making these adjustments, if you feel like you're learning something, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss one of my tutorials. Okay, and on this end point, remember the first base was a value of 75. We made the purple circles. 100, and so in this case, I'm going to make the Z value positive 125. Now again, I'm gonna add a drop shadow here, so I'm gonna select the original version of these white circles. And before I play with the drop shadow value, let me turn on our color solid so we can at least see what we're doing. Let's turn on drop shadow, and I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna turn on all of my replicators. So now what I really wanna do is kind of look at this logo from many different angles, make sure I like how far things are protruding and how they're laid out, that I like the way the drop shadows look. So we're gonna to have to make some adjustments here though, because I've got this over the white background. Over here, if you look at the inspector window, the white background position on the Z value is zero, as is 
my entire logo. So let me just show you what happens. If I select the entire logo with all of the different layers and replicators that we created and I rotate it on the Y value, it's gonna disappear behind the color solid because they're on the same plane. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to scale up my color solid very large and I'm going to zip it backward on the Z value, way backward. So now I'm gonna select my section logo here in my project pane. And now when I spin it on the Y, I should have gone far enough back, yeah. And now I can do a 360 look. Now look what happens here when we spin all the way around. You still see the starburst image on the back side of the logo. Now, this is a choice you can make. If you don't mind seeing the reverse of the logo on the particular logo you're working on, you can just leave it like that. But if you want it to be like a solid color and really show that it's the backside of a logo, let me show you how to do that as well. I'm gonna head into my project pane and find the original logo. I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to hit duplicate and I'm gonna rename that duplicate so I don't lose it. I'm gonna select it in the project pane and I'm going to turn it on which doesn't seem like it did anything. But now what we're gonna do is make it a solid color. So I'm gonna be selected on it. I'm gonna head on up to filters, color, and colorize. And what I wanna do is make both the blacks and whites the same purple. So I'm actually going to uncheck this layer so I can see that purple, but I can still work on it even if it's muted. So I'm going to remap the blacks by grabbing this eyedropper and clicking on the purple, and I'm going to go to the whites and do it again. And then I'm gonna turn on that backside. You can even see it's already a solid color now. And there you go. And then if I select my section logo group and spin it back around, you can see with the 360 degree view that the back is solid. All right, so now I promised you we would fix this issue of when you get to a 90 degree angle here where you can see all the individual layers, we're gonna fix that. I'm going to have my logo be a little bit askew kind of kitty corner here so I can really see what's going on with the depths. Let's first select this replicator, which is our full logo, our first replicator. Head on over to the replicator tab in the inspector window and let's change the points. Now on the slider, I can go up to 20, which may look fine to you. If you want, you can go up to infinity. You can select this 20 value here, click on your mouse, hold it, and then push forward on your mouse. And that is how you get a lot of layers to the point where your eye can't even perceive the individual layers and it looks very solid. It's also darkening our drop shadow because we're getting more and more and more points with all these values. And it's also probably gonna slow down your computer. I'm gonna go up to like, I don't know, let's say 50. I feel good about that, 50. Let's recap what we've got here on this first full logo, the Z value is 75. It does not protrude out as far as the other elements that we've created. So I think 50 points on this one is fine. However, when we get to our next replicator, let's look at the purple circles. Make sure you're on replicator and your inspector window. The Z value is at 100. So in my mind, I'm gonna need more points than I did for the base right? Because we're going a further distance. So I had 50 points on the base. Let's make this one 75 points. And you can really see if you look, they do look like solid little cylinders there. There they are. And now let's head on over to the white circles replicator. And in this case, let's make these 100 points. For the same reason, we're going even more distance. And there you go is your 3D logo. Now, now that we've adjusted all of the number of points on all of these replicators, you may feel a little bit differently about your drop shadows. What I'm going to do is kind of spin back here. Yeah, my drop shadows are looking, you know, a little significant for my taste. So, and it's not unusual to go back in and make these adjustments. So I'm gonna dial down the opacity on these drop shadows. Again, remember we're working with the original versions of our images. you guys, there you have it. You have a 3D logo. And you can make it much more deep if you so choose. You can really play with the elevations on the different elements of your logo. And you can move this logo using the properties values in the inspector. You could also head on up to camera and change the positions of the camera 
to also showcase how three-dimensional this logo is. And you can really have a lot of fun with that. There you go, guys. That is how you take a logo and make it three-dimensional in Apple Motion. Did you guys like this? Do you feel like you learned something? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for creating with me today. I picked out some other videos that I think you might really enjoy. I will see you again.